All right, let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens defense versus the San Francisco 49ers offense, and things went very well for this Ravens uh, defense in this game, and very poorly for Purdy, who also ended up getting banged up uh, in this game. So that's obviously, you know, adding injury to insult here, which is not good as well. Even if he ends up, you know, not having to miss uh, more time after this, it still is concerning just, you know, if he's not 100%, uh, there's some concerns there. But let's just talk about what went wrong in this game, and if, you know, Purdy does get back to 100%, what are maybe some potential issues down the line? I don't know. Let's get into it. Let's start off with this play. You know, uh, right off the bat, I mean, very early on, it almost felt like, you know, on the first drive, oh, wow, here we go. 49ers uh, offense rolling. I mean, you know, they were definitely moving the ball down the field. This is going to be Kittle with a one-on-one matchup. You knew the, you know, the Ravens, they love to play their man coverage, right? And so can San Francisco have guys who can win one-on-one? Well, usually the answer is an, an obvious yes, but, you know, in this situation, Baltimore covers very well. It's not quite as obvious. On a third down and seven, let's see what happens. So Purdy's going to take the snap. He looks towards Kittle, and Kittle gives him a window to make this throw. So right off the bat, pretty good situation for the Niners. And again, this is just what they do, right? Purdy makes this accurate throw, and on top of this, Kittle is able to break a tackle. I paused it right here, but you see, I mean, he has plenty of room to run. You're almost wondering, is he going to get a touchdown on this play? Well, as you see, no. Ayuk does a good job blocking, but Hamilton able to, is able to do enough. A teammate's able to uh, help, uh, you know, uh, run down uh, Kittle, but still, huge gain. So you were thinking, okay, here we go. This is the 49ers and what they do, but then the turnover started. This was the first one. Using this angle, it gives us a better view of what uh, happens. So, you know, the play concept itself, a bit of a risky concept. But again, you know, uh, it's not the worst idea in the world or anything. It's Debo Samuel running about trying to get into a gap in coverage over the middle. This is what the 49ers like to do. But that's also kind of the issue, right? Because it's what the 49ers like to do, the, the defense for the Ravens, which is a good defense, you know, debatably the best defense in football, they're going to be aware that this is what the 49ers like to do. Watch as when Purdy takes the snap, you're going to see him look over the middle right here. And for Kyle Hamilton, you know, uh, Debo Samuel, to be honest, I kind of see what Purdy sees in this. I really do. Uh, I don't think this is the worst decision I've ever seen. But the reality is you have to get that one really perfectly accurate and get it over there in a hurry if this is going to be a completion. And the throw just isn't quite there. Again, dangerous pass. Great play by Hamilton. Uh, and doesn't work. didn't work out. To be honest, I mean, Purdy has been going with dangerous passes all season. And usually they're working out. You know, but this time it just didn't. So this is kind of the thing of you take the good with the bad, but there is going to be some bad that comes along. And this is one of those examples. Moving on to interception at number two, which certainly falls in the fluky category here as the concept itself is supposed to be. So they're going to fake as though it's a handoff to McCaffrey, which will hopefully get that corner to move further in. Then Samuel runs, uh, you know, just a quick route. Hopefully you can get it to him, get him in open space. Hey, never a bad play to get Debo Samuel in open space. Also the corner on this play, Brandon Stevens. That's who's the main player here. Watch as when it begins, you see that it really works out. And in fact, in some ways it works out a bit too well. Stevens has moved so far in towards the middle of the field that for Purdy, I mean, if he can get it over Stevens, this is definitely a completion. However, you see Stevens gets up, he, you know, knocks the ball up, Marlon Humphrey gets the interception on that play, really just a great defensive play again, it's the Ravens defense, they can do this to, to you, uh, they're able to make these plays. Uh, and it's not even one of those situations where a lot of times on screen passes, you look at them and say, well, the, you know, the defense was all over it and that's how it got to be an interception. You know, when they are interceptions, that's usually why here that wasn't even really the case. The play concept kind of worked. It just, uh, you know, Stevens made a great play. So to me, that's, that's my main takeaway with that one. Heading over here, going to, you know, uh, stop and start this one a few times. So again, situation here, third down and five. That is notable, I think, with the third down and five. And you see Brock Purdy is going to take the snap. There is, uh, it's actually still just a four-man rush, but, you know, they kind of uh, were a little bit creative in how they did it. So because of that, there's a chop block on this play, which is going to, you know, that that doesn't really matter right now. It is worth mentioning the flag was thrown. I don't know if Purdy saw it or not, but at the end of the day, you still want to get the first down, right? Even with the penalty, because if you get the first down, well, then that sets up a, you know, a, still a third down scenario because they would have to accept the penalty instead of declining the penalty, but definitely don't take a risk to try and get the first down. 
You see Purdy, he scrambles out, you know, he does his best Lamar Jackson uh, imitation there. He's going to fire down the field, and you kind of see why he wants to make this throw. I mean, Kittle is uh, getting a bit open right here, not a ton of separation, but, you, you know, again, usually in these scenarios, Kittle is able to make the play, right? And while I would personally say, given the fact that there's a penalty, you probably shouldn't make this throw because... At the end of the day, uh, the risk of an interception isn't worth the reward of gaining some yards. At the same time, we don't know if Purdy knows that the flag had been thrown or not. He was kind of in the area, but I don't know if he saw that. So, you know, uh, it's to me, I get why Purdy's making this throw. But you see, I mean, look at that play by Marlon Humphrey uh, and then Kyle Hamilton, who he was actually the guy who uh, got chop blocked uh, at the beginning of the play. He gets up, hustles over, and gets the interception. So great stuff by him. Great stuff by Baltimore. But it's just these are the kind of things of you're used to your players winning when you make these types of throws. This time, it wasn't happening. There was also a couple of near-miss interceptions that happened. So this play, it's going to be a third down and five situation. You see the route that he's going to look towards, which, again, this makes sense. It's a route that definitely can get open in this spot. Now, it's Willie Sneed. Okay, it's, it's not exactly Debo Samuel here, but still, you know, uh, he's on the roster for a reason, right? But right when this play begins, you know, uh, there's going to be some contact here at the line. Uh, you know, legal contact. But because of it, it's slowed down by Sneed uh, to the point where he's not really getting open here. To be honest, I mean, Samuel is wide open. I kind of probably would have rather seen him get to his second read, uh, which would have worked in this scenario. Uh, but, you know, again, that's maybe a bit, bit nitpicky. Patrick Queen is completely, you know, uh, running free off the edge. So... Purdy's just going to throw it where he can here, trying to get a, f a first down, which I understand here. But I'm actually going to want to turn your attention towards Purdy himself. Watch how he throws this football. Watch him kind of, you know, peel back and almost, you know, he's kind of protecting himself as he makes that throw, which results in, I would say, I don't know if it actually affected the pass itself, but just something I noticed. Uh, you see, though, Willie Sneed, it's just kind of a timing thing. He turns around a little bit late. That was just a dropped interception there. So, again... If that was an interception, we're not looking at that and saying, what a terrible play from Purdy, but it's just putting the ball in harm's way, which is not ideal, even if it wasn't, again, we kind of sometimes get, I think, too caught up into whose fault is this? Was it Snead's fault? Was it Purdy's fault? The reality is, it was a bad play by the Niners. Like, whoever's fault it was, it's something they have to fix. This play, another one, where like, if it was intercepted, we'd be looking at it as a fluky interception, but still, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup with uh, Debo Samuel here. Purdy is going to take the snap, and he throws it behind Samuel. So Stevens had a chance at an interception, maybe a chance at a pick six there. Uh, that's definitely a, a a dangerous play. Now, again, it would have been a fluky interception if it was intercepted. But also, it was a bad play from Purdy. He threw it behind his receiver. Sometimes when you throw it behind your receiver, interceptions happen. So uh, that's just something that you have to have to work on. This interception, which, uh, you know, was really, uh, at the time, definitely felt like a dagger, where it's, uh, you know, zone coverage that the Ravens are in. They don't just play man coverage. They will play zone. Playing zone here. Watch as when Purdy takes the snap. I mean, it's just one of those situations where, like, okay, check down's open. Basically, anytime you can get the ball to Christian McCaffrey, it's a good decision. But even if it wasn't Christian McCaffrey, still probably a good decision to hit the check down here. But watch as Purdy gets hit as he's thrown and it gets intercepted. Again, I have a hard time really putting too much criticism on uh, Purdy for this one. That's, to me, that's a bad break. But at the end of the day, I mean, again, it's one of those things where, you know, I don't know, uh, the offensive line not coming through in this scenario. And that was something, you know, I talked about as a real issue heading into the season when I did my season preview is that I thought was getting underlooked was that offensive line uh, has some holes on it. And it's really, it, it showed up in this game. It did. So while I'm not really going to put the blame on Purdy, it was still a bad play by an offensive player that resulted in them not being able to, you know, them turning the ball over, which is obviously not a good thing. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I mean, listen, it was a bad game. It was. I don't know if it was quite as bad as the stat sheet would indicate, but again, I think, you know, people will argue and probably fairly so, typically... Purdy's kind of main argument has been like, well, look at the results he gets. You know, you can argue about maybe sometimes it's not, you know, that doesn't look as pretty by his uh, standards, but, you know, the team around him and just the results in general are able to be great. Well, if you're going to be the guy who, you know, that's what you point to is, hey, you look, look at these stats I put up. When you have a bad game, you kind of have to, you know, take that as well. That being said, 
I still think Purdy's a good quarterback. I think it was a bad day. It, it is what it is. Qu- good quarterbacks have bad days, uh, but I did think this was a bad day from him, uh, although maybe not quite as bad as the stat sheet would indicate. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.